So this is a new lecture, uh, new chapter overall. Uh, it is called hemodynamic disorders. Okay. So what are the changes happens in the blood and the blood flow? That's what we are going to discuss. Uh, one of the first thing we are going to discuss is about edema. Okay. So inshallah, after this lecture, you can able to define edema and list the causes of edema formation and explain the mechanism involved in edema formation and its clinical importance and you can able to differentiate between different types of edema on the basis of clinical pathological feature and able to identify the cause of edema okay so before going to the chapter of edema so let us discuss some basics here so in our body the fluids are distributed in two compartments one is we call intracellular compartment other one is called extracellular compartment okay so intracellular compartment is very simple the uh, the fluid which is inside the cells inside the cells and if you see two third of the fluid are inside the cell only one third of the fluid is outside the cell so that includes blood that includes blood okay so how this fluid are maintained for example more in the intracellular less in the extracellular if you see more in the intracellular less in the extracellular how it is maintained because of the electrolytes inside the cell and outside the cell are different Electro electrolytes inside the cell and outside the cell are different so the most important one i am going to discuss here is sodium and potassium understand if you see the sodium inside the cell is very less when you compare the sodium outside the cell okay and if you compare the potassium it is exactly opposite right it is very high when you compare with the potassium outside the cell so this should be in like this understand if this balance is lost then automatically the fluid exchange happens okay so this is one kind of fluid exchange okay that is if any alteration happens in the electrolytes then automatically the fluid sh shift from inside to outside or outside to inside okay so this electrolytes level it should be in balance according to this level okay there should not be any imbalance happening so if, if for example if sodium is increased more here then the fluid comes out the fluid comes out understand so if the sodium is getting more inside then the fluid goes inside the fluid goes inside so this is how the distribution of electrolyte plays a role in exchange of fluids exchange of fluids okay so the fluid exchange normally happens at the capillary bed yeah, normally happens at the capillary bed you all know let us let us take a heart okay just i'm for the uh, schematic purpose i'm drawing in like a square shape okay so it is a four chambered heart right it has right atrium right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle right so blood from the venous side comes to the right atrium and it goes to the right ventricle then it comes out of the right ventricle and it goes to the pulmonary artery and it goes to the lung it goes to the lung this is lung then it comes out of the lung through the pulmonary veins it goes to the which side of the heart it goes to the left atrium it goes to the left atrium so then from the left atrium it goes to the left ventricle from the left ventricle it enters the aorta it enters the aorta okay so then it goes into uh, from aorta it goes to large arteries muscular arteries then small arteries then it forms the arterioles then it forms the capillaries right so it is going uh, into small arteries and here it is forming the capillaries consider this is a capillary 
okay now then it forms the venules and they form the vein right then they again circulate into the they go to the heart and the blood circulates right this is circulation this is circulation okay now let us take some color now the deoxygenated blood enters the comes from the venous side and it enters the right atrium then it goes to the right ventricle then it goes to the which artery pulmonary artery then it goes to the lung when it comes out of the lung it gets oxygenated then it comes as a oxygenated blood in the pulmonary vein and it goes to the pulmonary vein and it enters the left atrium then the oxygenated blood enters the left ventricle from the left ventricle the left ventricle contraction happens the blood is pumped to the aorta the blood is pumped to the aorta so this is aorta when the left ventricle is contracting the blood is pumping into the aorta the blood is going to the aorta and when the blood is pumped it creates pressure right so when the ventricle is contracting when the left ventricle is contracting it is called systole right it is called ventricular systole and that pressure creates in the blood that is called systolic blood pressure that is called systolic blood pressure it is approximately 120 mm of mercury it is approximately 120 mm of mercury when the heart dilates that is diastole happens okay then the pressure falls that is diastolic blood pressure in the aorta that is approximately 80 mm of mercury so this is called blood pressure this is called blood pressure okay now the heart is pumping heart is contracting so now the blood is coming out with how much pressure 120 mm of mercury now the blood is coming here with 120 mm of mercury right any doubt in this okay so this aorta till the vein entering the vein entering the right atrium that is called systemic circulation that is called systemic circulation from the pulmonary artery till the end of the pulmonary vein it is called pulmonary circulation it is called pulmonary circulation okay so now the blood enters the from the left ventricle to the aorta because of left ventricle is contracting it pumps the blood out with a pressure that is 120 mm of mercury this pressure is seen in the systemic circulation so systemic blood pressure is 120 mm of mercury at systole at diastole it becomes 80 mm of mercury at diastole it becomes 80 mm of mercury okay now the blood is traveling right when the blood is traveling to from the aorta to large arteries then it travels to the medium sized arteries right it is traveling then do you think the pressure will be maintained same or the pressure will go down the pressure will go down okay so now when they reach the small arteries the pressure will be less the pressure will be less okay now you all know the capillaries all the blood vessels are lined by a cell called endothelium right it is lined by a cell called endothelium especially in the capillary there is a space there is a space okay this is the capillary bed this is the capillary bed so when the blood is coming with some pressure if they see a hole here that is a space between the between the endothelium right what will happen the blood will escape out right the blood will not escape out the fluid in the blood will escape out the fluid in the blood will escape out what is the fluid name in the blood plasma it is called plasma so let us discuss about blood here the blood contains what cell and plasma 
plasma contains what it contains proteins water electrolyte and it contains complement fibrinogen all okay clotting proteins it contains clotting proteins understand see the proteins are of three types in the blood okay in the plasma what are they albumin globulin fibrinogen or clotting proteins okay fibrinogen understand don't forget this okay so now the plasma escapes out the plasma escapes out right because of what because of what because of space but why in the space it is escaping out because of pressure in the in the blood vessel right because the pressure coming from here the pressure coming from here when the artery is the blood is moving in the artery the pressure slowly goes down but there will be some pressure if there is no pressure the blood cannot move right the blood is moving with pressure because of the pressure the pressure is created by pumping of the heart right the because the left ventricle contracts it pushes the blood outside with a pressure that pressure is systolic blood pressure that pressure is traveled in the artery that pressure is travels in the artery when it reaches the arteriole when it reaches the arteriole side of the capillary there is some pressure that and they see the hole here they see the hole here you all understand and because of some pressure the fluid escapes out because there is a hole right the fluid escapes out okay now to make it more simple i am going to use another example consider there is a water tank consider this is a water tank right now this is a pipe now this pipe is open the water is flowing right now what we did is the water is there are some holes here there are some holes here what will happen to this hole there will be some drop coming out right yes sir no there will be some drop coming out right if i close this tap what will happen to the drops here it will increase or decrease it will the drops will be increased why because of pressure here right because of pressure here you understand or not yeah. see because there is a water here and I, when i close the tap automatically the pressure here will be increased right mm -hmm. so that's why you get more fluid going out in the small holes right so this pressure is created by the water right so it is called hydrostatic pressure it is called hydrostatic pressure same concept goes to the heart now we have a heart here what is this right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle so this is from the come on venous side right this is from the venous side okay this is from the venous side the blood is is deoxygenated right so it is coming to the right atrium it is going to the right ventricle from the right ventricle it enters the it enters the pulmonary artery as a deoxygenated blood right as a deoxygenated blood but once it enters the lung the blood becomes oxygenated from the lung where it enters through the pulmonary vein it enters into the left atrium it enter, enters into the left atrium this is lung so when they enter the lung they enter as a deoxygenated blood when they come out as a lung they are comes out as a oxygenated blood now the oxygenated blood goes to the left atrium in the pulmonary veins they enter the left atrium they go to the left ventricle from the left ventricle it goes to the aorta it goes to the 
aorta so why it is going to the aorta because left ventricle contracts and it pumps the blood out it pumps the blood out so that's why the blood is going out with a pressure this pressure is created by contraction of the left ventricle it is systolic blood pressure it is approximately 120 mm of mercury millimeter of mercury and when the left ventricle contracts it will not have the same pressure right so automatically the pressure falls down it is diastolic blood pressure it is 80, 80. understand so this is happening in the systemic circulation it is called systemic blood pressure it is called systemic blood pressure okay now from the aorta it goes to the branches of aorta right it goes to the small large artery medium size artery then it becomes a capillary it becomes a capillary right so consider this is the area of capillary network this is the area of capillary network and we have cells here tissue cells right because the capillary is goes to the tissues right these are the tissue cells understand so now we all know the capillaries are lined by a special cell endothelial cells in the capillary we have endothelial cells having some holes right they have some holes okay the area between the cell and the capillary area between the cells and the capillary it is called interstitium this is called this is called you all know this this is called inter stitium interstitium is a space between the cells and the blood vessel the space between the cells and the blood vessel okay now this is tissue cells right this is tissue cells okay now we have a interstitium tissue cells and the capillary right and the capillaries are lined by the endothelial cells now the blood is traveling right the blood is traveling and the pressure slowly goes down right what is that pressure it is hydrostatic pressure it is hydrostatic pressure so when the pressure when the blood comes to the capillary because of hydrostatic pressure in the capillary the fluid escapes out the fluid escapes out the fluid goes out from the capillary end from the arteriolar side of the capillary end okay the fluid goes out so now we get the fluid in the interstitium we get the fluid in the interstitium right when the fluid goes out what will happen to the plasma in the capillary see now we have a blood here right what are the things in the plasma what are things we have in the plasma proteins okay now my question is now the fluid means water is going out right the water is going out what will happen to the concentration of protein in the plasma see now here the fluid means the water is going out right yes or no the water is going out from the plasma water is going out from the plasma what will happen to the proteins in the plasma the concentration of protein will be increased the concentration of protein will be increased now the protein will become more here right because the fluid is going out because the fluid is going out the protein will become more because the protein is getting more it creates a pressure it creates a pressure here this pressure is created because of the protein the fluid comes back they suck the fluid understand the fluid which went it comes back on the venular side of the capillary on the venular side of the capillary so we have venular side arteriolar side see because of hydrostatic pressure the fluid goes out the fluid goes out because of protein creating the pressure the fluid comes back the fluid comes back so there is no fluid in the interstitium there is no fluid in the interstitium so let us draw this area little bit bigger see this is the capillary capillaries are lined by 
lined by endothelial cells now the blood is coming entering the capillary with a pressure right that pressure is called capillary hydrostatic pressure understand now we have blood that contains plasma proteins right that contains plasma proteins once it enters because of this capillary hydrostatic pressure the fluid goes out the fluid goes out that this is the area called interstitium right this is the area called interstitium the fluid goes out right now when the fluid goes out the protein becomes more here the proteins becomes more here proteins are called as colloid proteins are called as colloid because now the protein becoming more here the colloid pressure is increased the colloid pressure is increased so this is called capillary colloid pressure this is called capillary colloid pressure that pulls back the fluid that pulls back the fluid so the fluid which we enter out which we sent out for example it is 14 ml per minute the fluid goes out at the capillary uh, arterial side of the capillary it is 14 ml per minute because of this capillary colloidal pressure osmotic pressure the fluid comes back that is 12 ml per minute so 2 ml of fluid stays in the interstitium 2 ml of fluid stays in the interstitium actually it is not good okay all the fluid which went out it should come back it should come back that's why in the interstitium we have a special channel called have you heard of lymphatic channel yeah. that is channel called lymphatics this extra fluid enters the lymphatics this lymphatics again drain into the vein they again drain into the vein so you get all the fluid back you get all the fluid back okay once again i am telling because of this hydrostatic pressure because of the capillary hydrostatic pressure the fluid goes out to the interstitium from capillary the fluid goes out to the interstitium from capillary because when the fluid goes out the proteins will become more in the capillary that will create a pressure called capillary colloid osmotic osmosis means pulling the fluid capillary colloid osmotic pressure that will pull the fluid from the interstitium to the capillary from the interstitium to the capillary then how much fluid remains there are some fluid remains in the interstitium that is drained by the lymphatics that is drained by the lymphatics then that fluid again comes to the venous side then again all the fluid goes to the heart okay this is how the circulation happens this is how the fluid exchange and the circulation happens any doubt in this okay so now let us go back here for example if the left heart is, right heart is not functioning what will happen so i am going to give a scenario please understand the right heart is not functioning do you think the fluid can come here the fluid will stay in the venous side venous side the fluid becomes more right the fluid stays more in the venous side if the fluid stays more what will happen to the capillary hydrostatic pressure what will happen to the capillary hydrostatic pressure it will increase or decrease who why it is decrease See, it's very simple logic. When the volume is increasing, the pressure will increase. The pressure will increase. Understand? So, if there is no way to come to the heart, all the fluid stays in the venous side. Then the fluid stays in the capillary. Then automatically that will increase the capillary hydrostatic pressure. If there is more capillary hydrostatic pressure, the fluid will go more. The fluid will go more. So, the more fluid goes to the interstitium, that will create a more fluid collection in the interstitium that is called edema 
that is called edema so edema means excessive fluid collection in the interstitium excessive fluid collection in the interstitium once again i give another example this is right atrium this is uh, right ventricle left atrium left ventricle this is systemic circulation right concentrate on systemic circulation alone if the right atrium is not functioning a right ventricle is not functioning the fluid cannot come here right so automatically more fluid gets collected here more fluid gets collected in the capillary right so that will create more increased capillary capillary hydrostatic pressure the capillary hydrostatic pressure is increased that will send the more fluid out that will send the more fluid out you get edema in the lower parts of the body you get edema in the lower parts of the body okay if left ventricle is not functioning left atrium left ventricle right atrium right ventricle from the venous side the blood enters the right atrium goes to the right ventricle then it goes to the pulmonary artery then it goes to the lung then it goes to the left atrium if left ventricle atrium is not functioning left ventricle is not functioning what will happen the blood stays more in the in the pulmonary circulation right the edema forms where in the lung the edema forms in the lung that is called pulmonary edema that is called pulmonary edema it is very very dangerous okay so the patient if left ventricle collapse left atrium collapse the capillary hydrostatic pressure is increased in the pulmonary circulation the edema forms in the lung edema fluid collects in the lung the patient cannot breathe the patient cannot breathe he will collapse he will collapse so this is fatal edema okay this is dangerous edema okay now see this is i'm drawing again the capillary what is this endothelial cells okay this is the blood is entering to the capillary it has a capillary hydrostatic pressure the fluid goes out right then the fluid comes out by a another pressure called capillary colloidal osmotic pressure that is by the proteins right okay if the person is having liver proteins are produced by liver are produced by liver if the person's liver is damaged person is a alcoholic person the liver is damaged do you think the protein can come here no. the protein will be very less in the circulation if the proteins are less do you think the fluid can come back no. the fluid cannot come back so automatically that leads to collection of fluid here that is leads to edema formation so there is liver damage or more protein is lost in the kidney normally the protein is not lost in the body okay person is diabetic the kidney changes the protein is lost in the urine if the protein is lost in the urine what will happen to the colloid osmotic pressure it will decrease then again the fluid cannot come so whether the protein is lost or protein is not produced or protein is lost in the gastrointestinal tract or protein is not observed whatever the problem the if the protein is not there in the circulation that will reduce the capillary colloidal osmotic pressure again the edema forms again the edema forms okay so and this is another capillary now the person's blood is coming to the capillary with a capillary hydrostatic pressure the fluid goes out right because the proteins gets concentrated here that creates capillary colloidal osmotic pressure the fluid comes back any doubt okay now there are some two ml of fluid that is collected by what lymphatics, lymphatics. now we have a lymphatics now this lymphatics is obstructed by tumor you know cancer can spread to lymphatics okay if lymphatics is obstructed by tumor do you think this 2 ml can be collected no okay the 2 ml cannot be collected that leads to the 
edema that leads to the edema understand so there are three chance for edema formation one is any disease which produce increased hydrostatic pressure any disease which decrease colloidal osmotic pressure any disease which produce lymphatic obstruction understand so based on this we will ask the cases okay so there are right heart failure will produce increase hydrostatic pressure on the venous side <coughs> that produce systemic edema edema in the lower parts of the body left heart failure that produce edema in the lung that produce edema in the lung this two mechanism is due to increased capillary hydrostatic pressure increased capillary hydrostatic pressure if the person is a alcoholic person and his liver is failed or person is a diabetic patient he is losing all his protein in the urine or the person is having some gastroenteritis disease and he is losing all the protein then he cannot have protein enough in the circulation that leads to decreased capillary colloidal osmotic pressure that leads to edema and another thing is cancer patient having lymph obstruction for example breast cancer patient is very common having axillary lymph node the tumor spreads so what we do is we remove the breast along with axillary lymph node so that's why the patient will have edema in the hand edema in the hand so for example the person is having oral cancer okay when they remove the oral cancer they remove the lymph node in the neck understand so when they remove the lymph node automatically the lymphatic drainage is obstructed so they have edema in the even face okay so this are the problem happens in lymphatic obstruction so there are some parasite which grows in the lymphatics so that one parasite i am going to tell you girls that is called filler yeah, i think if i show you the picture you might be known filariasis have you heard of it filariasis the leg will become like a elephant leg you all know elephant the big will become like a elephant kind of leg so that is a parasite that is a, a parasite which grows in the lymphatics it obstruct the lymphatics it obstruct the lymphatics understand so now let me ask some questions what is this right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle from the aorta the blood comes out of left ventricle to the aorta then it goes all the parts of the body right now consider it is going to the kidney consider it is going to the kidney okay now when the person is having some problem okay for example the person is losing his protein in the urine okay so there is decrease capillary colloidal osmotic pressure okay what will happen what will happen to the blood volume because the fluid is cutting getting collected in the interstitium what will happen to the blood volume it will decrease mashallah so it will decrease because the fluid is going out the fluid is going out the blood volume will be decreased when the blood volume is decreased if the blood goes to the kidney it will be more or less it will be less that is renal blood flow is less when the renal blood flow is less kidney receives less oxygen or more oxygen it receives less oxygen right when the kidney receives less oxygen immediately the kidney releases a hormone called renin have you heard of this yes the release a hormone called renin when the kidney receives renal blood flow is reduced when the kidney receives less oxygen immediately they get a release a hormone called renin this hormone is very very important because they do two three mechanism what are they yeah they renin converts the angiotensinogen angiotensinogen i think in physiology they would have taken right angiotensinogen into angio tensin 1 from there angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by angiotensin 1 converting enzyme angiotensin 1 converting enzyme this angiotensin 2 is very very important angiotensin 2 is very very important that will go again to the kidney but not in the kidney you know adrenal cortex 
it go to the adrenal cortex and they ask adrenal cortex to release a hormone called aldosterone you know aldosterone yeah. what it does aldosterone again goes to the renal tubules they reabsorb the sodium and water they reabsorb the sodium and water so when the sodium and water comes back to the circulation sodium and water comes back to the circulation sodium and water comes back to the circulation what will happen to the blood volume increase. it will increase because fluid is coming right it will increase when the blood volume is increased what will happen to the pressure increase. it will increase if the pressure is increased what will happen edema forms so it will become like a cycle it will become like a cycle so unless until you treat the cause of edema you cannot cure the edema you cannot cure the edema so that's why it is important for your level to identify the cause of edema <coughs> so once again i am concluding the edema forms because of three basic reason basic fundamental reason one is if there is increased capillary hydrostatic pressure or decrease colloidal osmotic pressure or lymphatic obstruction or lymphatic obstruction once again i am telling you all know that heart is pumping the blood is coming out with a pressure that is goes to the capillary that capillary the pressure which goes to the capillary that is called capillary hydrostatic pressure so the if the capillary hydrostatic pressure is normal the fluid goes out from the capillary and we have enough protein that creates a pressure that is called capillary colloidal osmotic pressure the fluid comes back some fluid remains that is collected by the lymphatics that is collected by the lymphatics then all the fluid comes back to the heart the circulation continues so if there is problem in the right heart then automatically the blood collected in the venous side then the pressure in the capillary is increased the fluid goes out edema forms okay or if the problem happens in the left ventricle then the fluid gets collected in the pulmonary circulation the edema forms in the lung that is called pulmonary edema so that pulmonary edema is very very dangerous because the person person cannot breathe so what happens is when fluid gets more collected you know alveoli yes. that get ruptured and the fluid goes to the alveoli and it comes out so when it comes out it mixed with air so it is called frothy sputum you know frothy yes. frothy means bubble okay Bub it, the saliva comes out with like a bubble understand so because of uh, the fluid mixed with air so when you see a person bringing the saliva with bubble okay sputum with bubble that is the end stage of him okay it is very difficult to save the patient understand so that is, see for example the you all must have heard of heart attack right yes. okay so heart attack means left ventricle stops functioning right left ventricle stops functioning means the left ventricle cannot pump the blood to the aorta when it cannot pump the blood to the aorta automatically pulmonary side the fluid gets collected then alveolar ruptures the pulmonary edema comes out the person die okay so frothy sputum is a sign of severe pulmonary edema frothy sputum is a sign of severe pulmonary edema so this is related to the hydrostatic pressure see medicine is something you have to imagine a lot because it's not like every time every every teacher will keep on drawing understand so try to imagine a lot so next is proteins liver disease is happening protein cannot be synthesized protein cannot be synthesized if any renal disease comes protein is lost or if there is any gastrointestinal disease the protein is lost in the feces or the protein cannot be absorbed okay so this all the disease will lead to decrease capillary colloidal osmotic pressure where the fluid cannot come back where the fluid cannot come back that leads to edema formation understand okay then remember the cancer patients okay we remove the lymphatics or cancer can block the lymphatics okay when you do a surgery for cancer we remove the lymphatics so the connection between the hand lymphatics and the chest lymphatics is lost so the hand will become edematous the hand will become edema this is called lymphedema this is called lymphedema okay, what's the time no it is uh, showing wrong time 157 okay so 
so this is about any manchala the handouts i will discuss in the next uh, next session okay so uh, just uh, see the video i hope you will understand and handouts i will discuss in the next lecture um, tomorrow please come for the lab